Hey guys, Palaki here, and uh, the suspension on the X24 is so goofy, I just have to tear into it. So I'm sure like a lot of people, I was wondering, how much does this middle shock do? And as you can see by the fact that I have it disconnected, not a whole lot. Um, the way the geometry works, it doesn't really actually add much travel to it. It just kind of tips the angle of the bike a little bit. So it might add some different progression for those rear shocks, but you're really not going to hit that much. Um, full range of travel from this shock alone is maybe about an inch on the seat, so not really a whole lot. Taking an even closer look, uh, we can see that this also is extremely hard to pivot. Um, like a lot of Engway bikes, I think they use too short of pins that kind of bind when you tighten the screw too tight. Um, I might either change that with different pins or just grease it and see what happens. Now I do also suspect that some of the binding action in a lot of these bikes is intentional. And you might be wondering why would you intentionally have your suspension bind up? And it's because it adds a little bit of damping. So a lot of these cheap bikes have like the cheap air shocks or just a spring with no oil. And uh, that's great for, you know, springing the bike, but it doesn't provide any damping action. So the bike will like to spring up and down for a bit. It's very bouncy. And uh, having too tight suspension screws is kind of a really dumb way to add enough friction that it doesn't bounce so much. So yeah, I was kind of thinking about upgrading this shock that's in the middle, um, just to give it a little bit of extra softness. Um, these bushings, they're kind of permanently attached to this. Um, I don't know if they're press fit or what, but they're pretty much on there. So replacing this might be more trouble than it's worth. And actually this screw is the correct length and everything. Um, I think it's just tightened so much that it kind of binds on the sides. I'm just going to grease it up a little bit and see if that helps. So another thing I did not mention in my video is that there's this little bracket here for the suspension arm that does naturally limit the travel. Um, I feel like if it actually hit that bump stop, it'd cause bad things to happen. But yeah, I don't think you could get full suspension travel out of these shocks with that bump stop here. So I figured most of the suspension rode on these uh, standard shock cross bolts, which uh, don't have threads, they just have this outer area and it screws into it at the end. However, I was a little confused as to what they're going to use here, and it is just a bolt that has a smooth area where it can ride on, just right at the, right at the end there where it's not threaded. Okay, solution, I suppose. Hinges up here, I've got this kind of taken apart as you can see, but there is a removable cross pin on here. I greased the bejesus out of it because it's dry, and I assume that will help if it can just, everything can rotate a little bit better in here. Um, it's also got these little shims. These are not actually... I thought they were all like pinned and molded into the frame, they're not. It's just kind of like a little crossbar that goes through there and then bolts to here as a hinge. Oh gosh, that's way smoother with a little bit of grease. Alrighty, well as you can probably see that was a huge waste of time. Um, it doesn't really work that much better, maybe a little bit better. It's definitely a little bit more free, but I don't know if you'd actually notice it in riding. <laughs> Hopefully you learned a little bit more about the weird suspension setup that the Angway X24 has. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, uh, be sure to leave something in the comments. Let me know what else you want to see on this bike. And as always, thanks for watching.